Hi, my name is Alessedi. I'm the co-founder of Earthrise Studio and I am so happy to be here with Leonardo Garnier. Leonardo Garnier, thank you so much for being here. Um, could you please introduce yourself and, and your work? Uh, well, my name is Leonardo Garnier. I was Minister of Education in Costa Rica and for the past two years I've been working as a special advisor to the Secretary General for the Transforming Education Summit. I'm so glad that you did your own job description because it's, it's a long one. <laughs> um, so, goal four, right, is focused on education. Can you tell us we're nowhere near where we are meant to be? Um, there are many challenges. Can you lay out a framework of where we are at and where we need to get to and the obstacles okay. to get there? Uh, we're not in a good position, and that's, okay. that's sad. And of course, the pandemic has a lot to do with it. There was a, a terrible blow in, in education systems all over the world. But even before the pandemic, we were far from the goals that we well, have set ourselves. And in fact, in, in the summit, we spoke about the, uh, the double crisis of education. You have one crisis of, of access, of inclusion, because you have millions of children out of school in the world. But there is also a crisis of quality and relevance, because even those that are going to school are not really learning what they should be learning uh, to confront the kind of challenges of the world we are living in. It, it's a very complex world, a very uncertain future, and we are not really preparing them for that future. Mm. We're here at Climate Week, of course, mm. in New York. You're focused on education. Can you tell me how these issues are interlinked and fundamentally linked with why we're here in this room with the Sustainable <laughs> Development Goals? No, how do no. these issues intersect? No, I think edu education has to do with all the 17 social development goals because, uh, I mean, when you speak about health, education for health is very right. important. Health for education, if, if children are not healthy, well-fed, they, they cannot study, but in turn, a good education means uh, healthy. When you talk about uh, economic growth, education has a lot to do with it. And when you talk about climate, uh, being conscious of what's happening to the planet and the kind of, of climate crisis we're confronting, that is an essential part of any curriculum that is relevant for, for the world in which we are living. So uh, one of the big results from the summit was the need for greening education, to, to introduce this, not just the knowledge about what is happening with climate crisis, but the responsibility that every person, every government has to, to really put forward mm. if we want to solve this problem, which is probably the most dangerous problem humanity has faced ever. A pretty existential um, crisis we're facing. Yes, yes. I mean, uh, I have one grandson and about to have one granddaughter. And when you think about that, what's the kind of world we are living then? It's, I mean, if we don't feel bad about that, I don't know what would we feel bad about. And I guess with that in mind, you've been working in this space for many, many years. Do you feel like there is a shift in awareness? Do you feel there is a momentum? Um, I think so. I, I'm, but by nature, I'm an, I'm an optimist. And uh, in education, I, two things I would say. I, it worries very much to me that we are not investing enough in education. So right. when you look at the picture from the world, perspective, we are not investing enough. But when I look at it, for example, from the perspective of the environmental uh, aspect of education, and I'm thinking here specifically in my country in Costa Rica, uh, climate crisis is part of the discussion. And what is very nice is that it was not something that came from the top down. It was not a decision that we politicians took and teachers did. It was the students that started talking about the environment and and, and the rivers and the, the garbage. And so suddenly it went back and, and we parents started to learn about the environment from our sons and daughters that came from school with all this for us crazy ideas Challenges. about, we have to separate the garbage. <laughs> okay, 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 we didn't know that. <laughs> so that makes me feel good. I mean, I, it's funny. Adults usually look at the younger generations with suspicion. These young people, the millennials, They're the naive. Gen Z, and they are fragile and this. I, I completely think on the opposite. I really think that what gives us hope is the young people of today. That mm. They are really interested in the deepest issues. I always tell them that you have to get involved into politics. And one, once I, I was telling my daughters that the, I was worried because they were not into politics and, and they told me, <laughs> And it was a beautiful answer. They said, no, Dad, don't be mistaken. We care about politics. We just don't like your parties. <laughs> so they have to find the way 
for a new kind of politics that confronts this challenge. Right, and there are so many ways to share their voices and we are all storytellers. Finally then, with future generations in mind, and you've mentioned your own daughters, um, what would be your one message, your one rallying cry for anyone who's watching um, of why they should get engaged and use their voice for this issue specifically? I think that the main, two, two things, the main role as young people is to, to bother to, to make us feel uncomfortable, to, to raise their voices, to protest, to... Uh, and, and I know adults don't like young people protesting, so that, that's one thing. And the other one, which is what many of us learn through life, is that you have to have your dreams and, and the reasons for, for protesting, but you also have to learn how do you transform your dream into reality. Mm. Because if you have the dream and you don't have the means to make it real, then it's only a dream. And again, if you only have the means to do things, but you don't have dreams, then it's boring and, and really short-sighted. So yes, dream high and learn how to transform your dreams into reality. Thank you so much for your time. Muchísimas gracias. Un gran gusto. Thank you.